Hi, today I'm going to show you how uh, easy CSV virtual output fields work. Um, so let's say you have an import page set up here. So you used a sample CSV or something. Um, this one was pretty simple. It just has four columns in the CSV I want to import. First name, last name, a tags field, which will pretend is like a comma separated list of text in a category. Now let's say that, okay, the API or Zapier or um, the other app doesn't take first name and last name separately. Let's say they, they need them combined. We can do that with virtual output fields. Or we just want the first tag or last tag. We can do that. Or <clears throat> the categories from the thing I'm exporting from, exporting the CSV from, is not the same as the category names as what I want when it's imported. So I can change the category name um, to something else if I want. So let's go through some of those examples. So we're going to click virtual output fields, new field. So we're actually making a new field that will be posted with every row. So let's say we want, you know, full name. So that will be the key, the output key, and we're going to combine the values. There's three options here. We're going to go through all three of them real quick. Combine. So we'll just add last name. You'll see, like, you know, the action is value of field. Join delimiter, we could say, like, oh, the default is space, so which is perfect for this because we want first name, space, last name. But what if we want to combine three fields that are comma separated? You know, you can put comma, space, or something like that. And then it'll concatenate those, you know, as a list. So let's save. You'll see here's the example output. It'd be something like Jane Doe, for example. And so then in Zapier or when, you, when you're importing your API or when you map it to like a Salesforce field or something like that, you'll use the full name field instead of first name, last name. You just get one convenient field. But let's say we want, you know, just part of the tags field. Let's say it's a comma separated list of tags. So we'll go to tags. And we have all these things to extract info from a value or change it. Like if we want to upcase something, like all uppercase letters or downcase, we want to make sure everything's uh, not uppercase at all, sentence case. We have all these things, and you can extract the first word of something, first word after a substring, so you always know you know, in some text, it's like this text colon, and then the thing I want, you can say that text colon is the substring right here, and then the output will be the word right after it. In this case, you know, we have a comma separated list of things, and we want one of the items. So in this case, one would be the first item of a comma separated list. Let's say there's always five items. This will give you the fifth item. Um, so you'll save that, and then, you know, let's just change this to like last tag. Right, so then every row that's posted on an import will add this field and this field now. Um, let's say that whenever we import, we have a field that's like published or public or something, and we, we want them all as not public so we can verify, you know, that we're not, um, I'm putting stuff live right away on an import. Well, we can always say for every row, put one single value. So let's say that public is false for every row we import. Right, so then this field will be posted with every row and it'll be false. So, you know, if you're going to Shopify or um, something else where it's like, okay, I don't want this thing or a blog post, I always want it as a draft first. You can say like public is false or draft is true or something like that. <clears throat> um, the last um, version of a virtual output field we have is I have um, category. And the thing I'm exporting from, the categories are strange. Maybe they um, don't, I, I want, I have a bunch of categories in my website that are standard, but I'm importing data from all these different websites. Like maybe you're importing product data from a bunch of different manufacturers and they have category, but they, they're not the same across all of them and you want them all to be the same. So let's say we, um, let's call this mapped category. And you'll say, like, if the category value exactly matches, let's say, shoes, and we want to map it to sneakers with a capital S, right? So that means if the value for category in that row is shoes, this new field, map category, will be sneakers. So then in your API or app, you can, instead of checking the category field on import, you check map category. And let's say that the category was hats. It'll, it'll still come through as hats for mapped categories. So you can just always use mapped categories instead of categories as soon as you set up these if this then change to case statements. Um, let's say, you know, 
the field sometimes includes the word games, but maybe it's like game shop or board games. We always want it to map to games and fun. Let's say that. And so you don't always have to do exactly matches. You can just say, does the, does the text of the field include this text? Um, so then it'll go through the case. Like if it, if it exactly matches, it'll be sneakers and it'll stop and return sneakers. But if that's not there, it'll try to see, does it have games? Then it'll be games and fun. If it doesn't have either of these, it'll just return what is in that value of the spreadsheet you're importing. So this is really powerful because a lot of people need to make sure that all these things map to a common thing. So like, let's say, you know, you're, you're importing five different CSV formats from different manufacturers into your e-commerce website. One says shoes, one says sneakers, but you want it to become sneakers, right? Or it's um, tennis shoes, you want it to be sneakers. So you can just set up one of these and it'll go through, it'll go down here and then you can use this field, you know, when when you're in Zapier or when you're in EAPI, just check this one instead of uh, the actual column of that's being imported. So we'll post the category column, but it'll always be the non-mapped one. And then we'll do the mapped category and it'll be the special case where it could swap it out. And so that's the three different types of virtual fields. Pretty easy, um, very powerful. Um, we have docs about it. Feel free to read them. Please contact support if you need any help. Thanks.